Oh no, the door just opened. Sorry, Punch is still in bed, so I was trying to keep quiet. So give me one moment, I'll BRB. <laughs> Cleverly. <laughs> when you start the stream, hold on. All right, we're back. Um, door shut. Cat has been petted. We're good to go. Uh, welcome back, everybody. It's been a couple weeks, I know. Um, but here we are. Hello, Max. How are you? Um, it's a weird time, but that means I'll just stream until I get tired. So none of this... I think I might do a little bit extra than what I was originally planning to do. Because I have time. Um, and I don't, I don't know if we're streaming today or not. We never talk about it uh, in the afternoon. But anyway, what have we been doing? <clears throat> We've mostly been focusing on the second declension. And by extension, uh, the full range of endings for adjectives. So adjectives modify the word they're um, describing uh, in gender, number, and case. They get that from the word that they're describing. Um, and to get those endings, they take on first endings for feminine, uh, second masculine for masculine endings, and second neuter for neuter endings. Um, it's a little bit tricky at first, but I am doing all right. Um, you know, got up this morning to send out a flock note to the to the parish with our mass, uh, and uh, pet the cat. Had some breakfast. He's looking at me really confused right now because he's like, "What she's what she's doing over there?" Um, but otherwise, okay. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of Spanish practice right now, so that's good. <laughs> All right. Don't I'm not coughing. Don't don't judge me. Okay. So we're going to start with lesson 16, the nine irregular adjectives. Uh so yeah, we have been working with um the first, second declension adjectives, which go ah, uh, well, us, ah, uh, um. So if we take bonus, good. Bonus for neuter, for masculine, bona for feminine, bonum for neuter. And then you just ch -ch 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 go down. There are nine irregular first and second declension adjectives. They're only irregular in a couple cases. Um... As you see there, it's the genitive singular and the dative singular where they are irregular. The genitive singular has an I-U-S instead of an A-E, an I, or an I. And the dative singular has a long I instead of an A-E or an O. Now, you're probably saying, why would they do that? It's because they're archaic. <clears throat> they're old. Um... And there are certain words, because of how frequent they are, they retain older forms. Or they change more. It's like one of the two. Like, the verb to be just changes more. These adjectives just maintain some older endings. So, the way to remember what the nine adjectives are, well, let me just walk you through them. So these are the nine. Alias, alia, aliud. So you see that one's already a little bit different because there's a U-D in the neuter. In the, yeah, in the neuter. 
other another. So if you have an alias, you have another identity or yeah. Alter, altera, alterum. The one, the other of two. So here's the difference between alias and alter. Alias, there's another one and another one and another one. Alter, it's either one or the other. Uh, so you have an alter ego, your other self. Unas a um, meaning one. You can actually use unas in the plural to mean only. I think Spanish does that too. No, Spanish, it means some. Uh, when you put the plural of one. I don't know why you would ever do that to yourself. And it's not super common either um, for only, but you can do it. Alas a um for any. Nullus a um for none. So you see alas and nullus are a pair. The n just negating. Alas any, nullus none. Solus a um alone. So that's the word that you see most often also for only. Um, solum. I feel like there's a phrase here, but I can't think of it. So there we go. Totas a um, all whole entire, the totality. Uter utra utrum, which, which of the two. Um, and then uter nutra nutrum, neither of the two. So uter which can be used for either. Uh, and then neuter nutra nutrum, neither of two which is where we get the word neuter from, because we have feminine, masculine, and neuter, neither feminine or masculine. So the way that we, I don't know who came up with this. Um, I learned it from Wheelock. They refer to them as the unis nauta adjectives. The unis nauta adjectives. The reason is just because the letters in unis nauta become a, um, you know, when you have a abbreviation using the first letter of all of them, it's one of those. Oh my goodness, my brain this morning should not have streamed first thing in the morning. All right. But it's one of those. So, and it has one of the adjectives in it, unas itself. And it is your reminder that adjectives match the noun they're going with in gender, number, and case, but that doesn't mean that they look the same, because unis nauta translates to one sailor, and it is grammatically accurate, because sailor, although first declension, is a masculine noun, so you need the masculine adjective unis to describe him. Unis nauta, one sailor. First you for uter, neuter, unus, solus. Um, I'm trying to f remember with that. Nullus, alter. Um, now I'm going to cheat. Alus, totus, and alter. That's your handy dandy mnemonic. And then again, so these adjectives are pretty much the same as other first and second declension adjectives, except for the genitive and dative singular. And uh, some of those uh, nominative forms, and in the case of aliud, the accusative form of the neuter, because it's not a UM, it's a UD. But you should know that the neuter is always the same in the nominative and the accusative. So you just got to repeat. So here's nullus. Um, nullus, ah, uh, um, nullius, 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 nulli, 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 nullum, 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 nullo, nullo, nullo. And then in the form of alias, alia, aliad, alias, 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 alii, 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 aliam, aliam, aliad. Alio, alia, alio. The plural is regular. So it's just the genitive and dative singular. Another small asterisk, which, yep, he does mention in this next note. 
Uh, the genitive of alias is rare in the singular. Instead of it, use alterius, the genitive of alter. So alias and alter both mean other. Alias meaning of several, alter of two. But if you're using alias in the singular, then it's essentially the other of two. So they just use the genitive alteri us uh, pretty much for all the singular, including alias. So these peculiar case endings are also found in the declension of pronouns, which we'll see soon. Uh, for this reason, these adjectives are sometimes called the pronomial adjectives. I don't know why you would do that to yourself, though. I prefer to think of them as the unis and nauta adjectives. I have to go make sure my cat's not breaking something. All right, back again. So, we have Altair, the one. Okay, so in 110, he's just showing us um, something that's used in writing. So, um, English has certain stock words on the one hand, on the other. Um, not only, but also um, some others. Some blah, 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 do this. Others, blah, 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 do that. So here's how you express some of those in Latin. So alter, alter, the one does this, the other does this. Alias, alias, one group does this, another group does this. Alii, alii, some do this, others do this. So examples of that, alterum opidum est magnum, alterum parvum. Uh, one town is great, another town is small. Uh, you'll notice that Latin just leaves out the words that repeat. You're, you should just resupply opidum est. Aliud opidum est validum, aliud infirmum. One town is strong, another weak. Aliis gladius, aliis scuta portant. So here are the verbs at the end, but you need to supply it in both phrases. Some carry swords, some shields. Others shields. Okay, not, not too bad. They regularly bestand. They regularly stand before and not after nouns. Uh, so let's do these Latin sentences here. In utra casa est Julia. Julia est in nutra casa. In which house is Julia? Julia is in neither house. Nulli malo puero primium dat magister. Okay, we got to break it down a little bit because magister, the subjects at the end, kind of uh, throwing things off here. So the teacher gives a prize, magister dot primium, nulli malo puero, to no bad boy. So, you know, if you're a bad student, you're not going to get a prize. Okay. Alter puere es nauta, alter agricola. One boy is a sailor, the other a farmer. Alii viri aquam, alii teram amant. Some men love water, others land. Galba unus, or solus, cum studio laborat. Galba alone works with zeal. Esne ulus caras in agromeo? Is there any uh, wagon in my field? Lesbia est anquila alterius domini Tulia alterius. Lesbia is the maidservant of one lord, Tullia the maidservant of the other. 
Lesbia sola cana parat. Lesbia alone prepares dinner. Cana nullius alterius anquilae espona. The dinner is good. Okay. The dinner of not either of the maid servant. What? We just got a long string of genitives, everybody. Of neither maid servant. Of no either of not any of the other maid servant. I mean the idea is that neither maid servant has a good dinner. It's just a really dumb way of saying it. Because why would you have both nullius and alterius? Why not just have like nutrius? Nutrius. Uh, okay. Whatever. Lesbia nulli alii wiro kenam dat. Lesbia gives dinner to. No other man. Again, why would you rep What? That's just kind of gross, but okay. Whatever. <laughs> using nullius. Using, here we go. No one. To no one man. Okay, that's bad English. But no worries, let's talk about pronouns now. Everybody take a break. We were just doing irregular adjectives. We took a lot like first, second declension adjectives, and except for the genitive and the dative. Now we're gonna do with pronouns. Pronouns stand in the place of other nouns. Now we've already talked about possessive adjectives. How to say mine, yours, and his own. But back when we did that, we only learned his own. We couldn't yet say, um, lesbia, uh, um, made his dinner, right? We couldn't say lesbia made his dinner. We would either have to use the name of the, of the guy, or we'd, um, just have to leave it out and imply it. Now, with the demonstrative is a, is a, id, we are going to learn how to say lesbia made his dinner. Some third party. So it's not a reflexive possessive. It is a third person reflexive. Or non-reflexive. Right. A demonstrative is a word that points out an object definitely. Such as this, that, these, and those. Sometimes these words haha, are pronouns, uh, such as, do you hear these? And sometimes these words work as adjectives. Do you hear these men? In the former case, they're demonstrative pronouns. In the latter, they're demonstrative adjectives. All right, Latin has the same sort of thing. You can use the demonstrative words either as nouns or as adjectives. Uh, the one most used is is, ea, id. He, she, it. Or this, that, this, this. This, 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 this. Or that, I guess, if you really want to. It's a very weak demonstrative. And as you just heard me say, I just translated it as he, she, and it. Because the Latin does not have those words. And this is the weakest of the demonstratives. We're later going to learn words that are more specifically this, those, and those over there. Essay it is kind of a catch-all. It's a weak catch-all. Um, you can use them like adjectives. You can use them like pronouns. You can use them to say his or hers. Um, 
in a case when Latin wants to make it clear. It does not usually need to. These demonstrative adjectives, both this set and the ones we'll learn later, are very similar to the unis nauta irregular adjectives. Uh, you know, they have their funky nominative forms, but then they have the ius in the genitive and the long i in the dative, and then they start looking more normal. Um, um, well, and then the neuter just has to be the same. But then o, a, uh, o, e, i, a, orum, erum, orum, is, 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 os, as, a, is, is, is. So other than the nominative and the genitive and the dative, they're very normal and very similar to those unis nauta words. So not too scary. The base is e. Note, because the base E changes to I in a few cases, the genitive singular aeus is pronounced aeus, as I just said. So it's not um, aeus. It's not um, aeus. It's not aeus. It's aeus. Um, just because of the particular form of this word. In the plural, the forms with two eyes are preferred. E, -e for the masculine plural, e -es for our date of an ablative plural. But, you know. But the two eyes are supposed to be pronounced at was one. So, there's that. Uh, and 115 notes as I did, besides being used as demonstrative pronouns and adjectives, this, this boy, whatever. The Latin demonstratives are regularly, regularly used for the personal pronoun he, she, it. As a personal pronoun, then, it would have the following meanings. He, she, it, of him, of her, hers, of it, for him. None of this is um, surprising. Okay. But this is why you have to know... The difference between is a uh, id uh, and the suas um, adjective. Suas is reflexive. The noun that is modifying refers back, or the adjective suas refers back to the subject of the sentence. Is a id refers to somebody else, not the subject of the sentence. So if we have these examples here, Galba calls his own son. Galba suum filium wocat. But Galba calls his son, somebody else's son, Galba aeus filium wocat. It is much more clear in Latin than in English, because in English we do not generally put in own uh, to clarify. Galba calls his son, we would still say that to be. When Galba is calling his own son, we would just say his because we're e lazy in English. Um, Latin, you have to differentiate between suas, his own, and is it in somebody else's. Super important. All right. I'm not doing the English to Latin. You should. If you're doing this, like, to become an expert in Latin, you should definitely do the English to Latin. That is going to be your best way to know that you know what you're talking about. For our purposes, we're just going to look at Cornelius and Marcus. Ooh, and then we can do verbs after we do this. That'll be so exciting, everybody. All right, Cornelius and Marcus, what do you say? Wissest vir, Corneli, cum puero parvo, es ne Romanus et liber? Romanus non est, Marque, es weird es servus, et eius domic domicilium est in silvis Galliae. Es ne puer filius eius servi an alterius. Nutrius filius es puer? Is est filius legati sexti? Quo puer cum eo servo properat? 
is cum sere properat ad lato sexti agros. Totum frumentum est iam maturam et magnus suorum numerus in Italiae agris laborat. Agricolaine sunt Galli et patriae suae agros arant. Non agricolae sunt, bellum amant Galli non agriculturam, apud eus viri pugnat et feminae auxilio libororum agros arant parant quae cibum. Magister nostre pueris puel, pueris pel, puelisque gratas galorum fabulae saipe narat, et laudat eo saipe. Mala es fortuna eorum, et saipe miseri servi multis cum lacrimis patrium suam desiderant. Ufta. Okay. Who is the man, Cornelius, with you? The small boy, presumably your small boy. Is he Roman and free? He is not Roman, Marcus. This man is a servant, and his house is in the woods of Gaul. Is the boy his son? Ah, is the boy the son of this servant, or another? The boy is the son of neither. This is the son of Legate Sextus. All right, so the Puero Paro, we didn't know either. <laughs> Whither does the boy hasten with that servant? He hastens with the servant to the fields, the broad fields of Sextus. The entire crop uh, is already mature, and a great number of slaves work in the fields of Italy. Are the farmers, let's see, are the Gauls farmers, and do they plow the fields of their own fatherland? They are not farmers. The Gauls love war, not the custom of agriculture, of the field, or agriculture, agriculture. Among them, the men fight, and the women plow the fields with the help of their sons, and they prepare dinner. Our teacher told stories often to the boys and girls that were mm, gracious about the gulls, pleasing stories of the gulls. And often he praised them, praises them. Sorry, we're all in the present tense still. We haven't learned anything but the present. Evil is their fortune, and often... Um, as miserable slaves, they desire their homeland with many tears. Okay. So that's what we think about gulls. <laughs> it's so weird. I'm going back to Whitaker's words. Because I think desidero is to desire. Um... So I just want to double check. I'm not confusing it. Something else. Okay, I was confusing it with something else. Desidero, desiderare. To desire. Um, to request. To lack. So, I mean, there is desire in there, but... Probably to... To, like... Miss their homeland makes more sense here. All right. I like that the dialogue has a little note. There are a number of departures from the normal order in this dialogue. Find them and give the reason. So they're just saying, go through and figure out when it's not subject, object, verb. Okay. 
When a noun is modified by both a genitive and an adjective, a favorite word order is adjective genitive nouns. We have that number two. Dato sexti agros. Yeah, this is like super popular to put the genitive in between the adjective and the noun. All right. And in similar phrase, number three, a modifying genitive often stands between a preposition and an object. So preposition, genitive, uh, and the object of the preposition. Uh, you want to put all the describing words in between the preposition and the... Um... Oh good, you are picking up my little mouse on the screen. Yeah. So, very cool. So that's nouns. We're going to take a break from nouns, at least for a few subjects. My cat just ran down the stairs. Okay. Uh, so we'll be doing verbs, at least for a little while. Um, so I'm just going to introduce us. Yeah, I'm going to go back to kind of see how long we have away from nouns before we get uh, content. All right. Conjugation. All right, we got through 17. Three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, so we go for verbs for a while. Sweet. So we'll just get started today at the very basics of verbs. Come on. Can everybody take a little mental break. How do you say my cat just ran down the stairs in Latin? That, that was not how you say it. That was how you scold your cat in Latin. Um... Um, give me a moment to make sure I remember all my words accurately. So it's like, um, probably one the mouser, fellas. So, maus, fellas, um, ran is... Curo, curere, curet, ran. Well, wait, we won't pass test because he ran down the stairs. Yeah, oh, don't worry about that, Max. Um, curo, curere, cur cursi, curset. All right. S stairs. I wish I could think of a better word for stairs, because I don't like either of these. They had stairs in Latin. I'm using Whitaker's words right now for my... Uh, Alright, so you could curse it. You say dick a curse it. Ad canciones. Do you think that would take a date of ran down? That run. Or would it be a hmm? Sub? Maybe sub. That were kukuri cursum. Descend. Oh, I can just say descended. Yeah, that'd probably be better for run down. Descended. Descendi. Descendit. Descendit. Neus fetus. Descendit. Just now. Nunc. Nunc is now. Uh. Uh. 
guess that's probably the best way because most of the other <laughs> just is a tricky word. Um, um, at this moment. I know that there's a better way to express than just saying now, but we're just going to put now. My cat now ran down the stairs, descend it, ad canciones. Come on, stop autocorrecting. Some of us are trying to do Latin. But I do know that there's a better way to express just... I'm just ha, trying to think of it. Um, just now, Hunkmodo? No, that's in this way. Mm. Hmm. Had hook to this point. Hmm. I'm not loving any of them, frankly. Anything I'm coming up with. All right. All right. Well, we just jump right in with to be. Oh, goodness. All right. So we're going to learn a very important verb, everybody. To be. And that will be where we <laughs> go for today. Because um, we got a lot of verbs coming up. It's going to be great. Right. Uh-oh. Punch's alarm just went off. Give me a moment so I can throw it at him. Like many of us, Punch uh, uses his cell phone for an alarm clock, but Punch also leaves his out in the living room. I think it's in order to get him out of bed. Whoa, what happened to my camera? Where am I? Okay, I'm there. All right, anyway. Verbs. Woo. Shake out your head. Get ready. Um, think about verbs for a while. All right, so nouns decline. And I'm making you think about nouns again. Nouns decline. They change the way they look depending on what they're doing in a sentence. Okay, verbs conjugate. They change the way they look depending on what they're trying to express. Verb conjugation is usually um, easier to understand. Uh, for English speakers, because our verbs also change. <laughs> like, we're used to verbs changing. Um, in English, we use a lot of helping words. Um, so, as he says in this first paragraph, the inflection of a verb is called its conjugation. In English, the verb has but a few changes in form the different meanings being expressed by the use of personal pronouns and auxiliaries, or helping verbs is what I learned them as, as a kid. For example, I am carried, we have carried, they shall have carried. Um, so we have to use that personal pronoun to say who the subject is. Um, 
we use some sort of helping verb if it's going on in the past or in the future or if it's active or passive. And then we have the base verb itself to carry and sometimes that gets a few changes too. Carry, carries, carried. Uh, not too many changes, but a few. So Latin, as you may guess, instead of using personal pronouns and auxiliary verbs, the form changes with the meaning. So you get the root verb, and then you have like a trunk load of endings to, I guess I should say the, the root, and then the trunk load of endings to talk about who's doing it, when they're doing it, whether they're actively doing it or they're having it done to them. So in this way, the Romans expressed the differences in tense, mood, voice, person, and number. That's not the order I usually say it. So if I go person, tense, person, number, tense, voice, mood. Person, number, tense, voice, mood is the order I normally talk about them in. But we're going to go this way. The tense first. The tense is what time it's happening in. It also includes something called aspect, um, which is a little bit more tricky to understand. Um, but the chief distinctions in time are present, past, and future. So the present tense, what is happening now, what usually happens now, present tense. The past could be what was happening, what used to happen, what had happened, what has happened. And those get used for imperfect, perfect, and pluperfect tenses. The future, what is going to happen, what will happen, what will have happened. We get the future and future perfect tenses. So Latin has a total of six tenses. Present, imperfect, perfect, pluperfect, future, and future perfect. They all have different endings. The moods. The mood is something that we probably won't be talking too much about just yet. It's a little bit later in the course. Um, but mood indicates the manner in which they express action. The moods are indicative, subjunctive, imperative, and infinitive. All right, what does that mean? Well, for the first note, a verb is in the indicative mood when it makes a statement or asks a question about something assumed as fact. A simple statement, that's an indicative. All the verbs we have used just far are in the present indicative. Simple statements, indicative. Subjunctive is when we get wishes, uh, things that might happen, things that could happen. Subjunctive is also uh, used in subordinate clauses, so not the main verb. Sometimes you flip it into the subjunctive tense. Imperative is a command. Do this. Cat, get over here. He's exploring the table right now. And the infinitive um, is when a verb is not conjugated. So um, it's too blank. To, to sing, to dance, to stream, um, too blank is the infinitive. And it gets used in certain um, constructions. Hey, right, persons, this is a little bit easier. There are three persons, just as in English and Latin. So there's the first person, I or we, second person, you, and third person, he, she, it, they. All right. Um, in English, we use the pronouns or um, a specific noun, proper noun, there we go, uh, to express who the subject is. But in the Latin verb, the endings tell you what the person is. So it gives you a lot more clue. Uh, so here, this is really important. I cannot stress learning this little chart enough. This is the active personal endings for the present system. 
O or M. So um, some tenses, they have an O for the first person. Some tenses have an M. O or M, S, T, mus, tis, ent. O, M, S, T, mus, tis, ent. O, M, S, T, mus, tis, ent. Learn it. It will save your life. Because if you can find the verb and you can identify one of these, you know the person and the number of the subject. And that helps you out a lot. O, M, S, T, mus, tis, ent. And you use these for... Um, for three of the tenses, really, and then for more of the tenses in a roundabout way. Most verbs form their moods and tenses after a regular plan and are called regular verbs. Hey, we love those. Verbs that depart from this plan are called irregular. Aww. The verb to be is irregular. Aww. In both English and in Latin. Yay. The present, imperfect, and future tenses of the indicative are as follows. Sum es es, sumus es es sunt. So you see the MST mus is ent. I am, you are, he is, we are, you are, they are. Singular, plural, present. It's very similar to lots of other languages in the um, Romance family. Sum es es, sumus es es sunt. Uh, the imperfect indicative uh, is a little bit more regular. So you have an ER, and then an A, and then MST mustisent. Iram erasarat, iram erasarat Not too bad. Uh, not like the sumes s sumes s sunt. Like sometimes you're doing the s thing, sometimes you're doing the su thing. Okay. Way to be tricky. Um, there actually is a rhyme and reason for it. You, you'll see the S, Est, and Estis. They'll have a, a T or an S hitting the base. The Su, uh, they're all M or T, mm, or nasally um, letters. So. Sum es es, sum es es sunt, eram erasarat, eram erasarat es erant. I was, you were, it, it was, we were, you were, they were. So imperfect is a time in the past um, that was either habitual event, uh, happened over a long period of time, um, what you want to differentiate eventually is the imperfect from the perfect. Because the perfect tense is one um, completed, simple, um, weny, weedy, weeky. I came, I saw, I conquered. Right? Those were all perfect. Um, simple past events that, bam, happened and done at precise moments. But Caesar could say, I was in Gaul, I was going there, <laughs> because he was there for a longer period of time. Um, future indicative, this is a simple, simple old future, nothing surprising about it. Again, it's got that ER, uh, and then mostly an I, Iro erisarit, erimisaritis erunt. Um, you will, we will discuss why this is when we get to other verbs. Um, because both in the imperfect and the future, it's trying to be like other verbs. It's trying to be like normal verbs. Uh, it didn't quite make it, but it's trying. So I will be, you will be, you will be. Be careful about vowel quantity and accent in these forms. Or you can not. Observe that in English, you are, you were, may be either singular or plural. In Latin, the singular and plural forms are never the same. So, in case you're wondering, that doesn't happen here. All right. So let's do one last little dialogue, and then next time we'll look at regular conjugations. All right, ubi es Marque? Who's talking right now? The boys, Sextus and Marcus, okay. Ubi es Marque? 
ubi est quintus, ubi estis amici? Un quinto sexe in silva sum, non soli sumus, sunt in silva multi alii pueri. Nunc laetis est, sed nuper non laetis eras. Per miser eras? Misereram quia amici mei erant in alio vico et eram solus. Nunc sum apud socios meos, nunc laeti sumus et erimus. Eratis in ludo hodie? Hodie non eramus in ludo, quod magister erat aiger. Eratis ne mox in ludo? Amici mei ibi erant, sed ego non ero. Cur non ibi eris, magister saipe eratus, in opium tuam studi diligentiae, no, dilianti, diligentiae quae non laudat. Nuper aiger eram et nunc infirmusum. All right, so Sextus. Where are you, Marcus? Where is Quintus? Where are y'all, friends? I am in the wood with Quintus, Sextus. We are not alone. There are other boys, many other boys, in the forest. Okay. So look look at all these forms that to be. Aren't they beautiful? And make sure you always follow all the adjectives. So sunt is our third plural, so we need to find pueri, and then both multi and ali with pueri. And there are many other boys in the forest. Now you are happy, but recently you were not happy. Why were you miserable? I was miserable because my friends were in another town and I was alone. Now I am with my friend, well, my allies, Sokios. <laughs> and Apud is like in the house, like in the presence of, in the house of. Now we are happy, and we will be. Were you in the game today? I guess like the arena, Ludus. Today we were not in the Ludus, because our uh, teacher was sick. Will you soon be in the game? My friends are there, but I will not be there. Oh, will be there. Errant. That's the future. Eroa risarit, erimensarit disarant. My friends will be there, but I will not be there. Why will you not be there? The teacher, often angry. Sorry, there was a thing. Sorry. The teacher, often angry. Um, non lauda, does not praise your lack of. Is a deal and diligence. Oh, the ludus must mean the school here. <laughs> Let me just double check that. That that must be what's going on. A ludus can be a lot of things. Game, play, sport, pastime, entertainment, fun, school. Elementary school. We're talking about the elementary school here. Checks out. Makes more sense while we start talking about the teacher. All right. Uh, so we're going to go back to Sexus's line, Eratus in Ludo Horie. Were y'all in school today? We were not in school today because the teacher was sick. Will you soon be in school? My friends will be there, but I will not be there. Why will you not be there? The teacher, often angry, does not praise your lack of zeal and diligence. Recently, I was sick. And now I am weak. So Marcus is too weak to go to school, which is the same word for game, which is very, very confusing. Hold on. Alright, I apologize for all the interruptions today, but 
We've learned some forms for to be Pueri Romani in Ludo. Roman boys in school. Romans weren't big on school, so it's okay. All right, we got through irregular demonstrative adjectives. Um, the irregular unus now to adjectives uh, and the forms of to be. Um, so next time we will look at the regular verbs. Uh, so try to learn OMST mustis ent over the next week. <laughs> OMST mustis ent. That's all I'm asking. So we'll see how we go. See how we do. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely day. I hope you're all healthy, etc., etc. And I'll see you at some point today. I've been reading Augustine's Confessions, and it's interesting how this correlates since he also said kids got beat by the teachers. 100%. Um, and his work is actually pretty easy in Latin. Um, so yeah, he hated school. He really did. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, what I most remember from the first book of Augustine's Confessions. He hated school. Um, so, yeah, there's lots of beatings. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I read... I think we read the all of book one uh, in Latin when I was doing an independent study with someone. So I'd recommend that for um, once you've finished, you know, a Latin course, you could read that for sure. I don't remember liking Augustine's Confessions very well, but I had to read it freshman year of college, and maybe I'd like it more now. Um, Um, yeah, I, I would definitely recommend it. Um, one of the great things about the church fathers like Augustine and Thomas Aquinas uh, is even though the ideas are very profound, especially in Thomas Aquinas, like the Summa is just so detailed. Uh, but the Latin's actually not bad. The Latin's actually like baby Latin. Um, so it's, it's generally pretty good. So. But one thing at a time, we still have to learn the regular conjugations. <laughs> you do need to know those. <laughs> anyway, have a lovely day, everyone. Um, we'll let you know if we're going to do something or whatever's going on here after we do mess. <laughs>